Welcome back to another video. My name is Sebastian Rosicki, and on this one, let's talk about how to EQ a guitar. So before we start, uh, if you aren't already subscribed to the channel where I talk about everything guitar from technique, mixing, uh, live streams, all that kind of stuff. So if you like the content that I produce, go ahead and give me a subscribe. All right, so let's jump into it. Now, the best way to listen to these audio examples is to use uh, a good pair of headphones or uh, some, some studio monitors. Um, listening on computer speakers or speakers on the phone won't get you the full full benefit. All right, so I have a recording here from one of my practice sessions that I did. It's a little section from the Rodrigo that I'm trying to get back into playing again because it's actually one of my favorite pieces. So this is a small section in the beginning. Uh, let's go ahead and listen to it. So the first thing I like to do is called subtractive EQ. Let's load up an EQ plugin. I like to use the Ozone 9 Elements plugin, just a really basic plugin, really. Any EQ plugin would work the, from the techniques I'm gonna show you. This is just the one that I personally like. Uh, but you can also use a stock plugin that comes with your DAW. All right, let's hit play again and see what the plugin tells us. Now you can kind of see that I'm getting a lot of jumps around like the 200 mark, maybe 300 mark. These are the frequencies that I'm going to consider lowering because those frequencies are kind of jumping out over all the others. Because whenever you're doing subtractive EQ, you don't want to subtract a lot of different frequencies. You just want to take out the ones that don't sound good in the mix. You're always going to have frequencies that kind of stick out and aren't pretty. And you want to really take those out because the, the, the room that I recorded in is not acoustically treated. It's just I would just record it in my living room. Now, I also made a video on how to record classical guitar, so I'll put that in the description if you want to check it out to see how I made this recording. But as far as putting some EQ on there, create a point and adjust the width to be very, very narrow. And raise the gain on that frequency so you can kind of do a sweep technique and find which frequencies stick out that you want to take away. So just kind of sweeping around. You can kind of hear those frequencies. Once you get higher to about 6K, you hear a lot of the nail sounds that come from the guitar. But uh, one thing I love about this software is that you can actually hit Alt or Option if you're on Windows, and it cancels out all the frequencies except for the ones that is selected. And this makes it a lot easier to take out frequencies that you don't want. So let me just sweep through. Oh yeah, there's one right there. Now you hear this frequency because it really sticks out more than anything. Now, if, if you're gonna be just sweeping across and finding frequencies to take out and you're gonna boost a dB uh, on very selective frequencies, then they're all gonna sound bad. So you really have to be cautious and not overdo it because then your mix is gonna sound really, really thin. Now, once you find the frequency that you want to take out, just reduce the dB on that certain frequency. In this software, it might look like I'm taking out a lot of this frequency, but really it's just about four decibels. Yeah, so if you just go to before and after, let's see if you can just hear that same frequency. It's very, very subtle, but it, I think it makes a big difference. And it kind of retains that natural sound that you're looking for when it comes to recording guitar or again, any other really acoustic instrument. 
All right, so let's take a few more and find anything else that sounds really bad. Let's see, I thought I heard something around 300. I just kind of found two more frequencies that I didn't like. Now, typically I'd probably spend more time on this just to kind of refine the work that I do. But for the sake of this video, let's kind of move on. I like to load up another EQ plugin. I can even use the same one. It doesn't really matter. And for this one, I like to roll off the high end and low end just to get rid of all the low rumble that happens whenever you're recording. So this is gonna be like your heater, AC, things like that. You can really hear um, in the in the low end, especially if you're listening on headphones or good quality speakers, even you know a subwoofer for sure. Uh, you can really hear those frequencies, and they just it's just a rumble. They're not really pleasant to listen to, so just cut them off. And I like to just take it up to the extreme, make it sound really thin and then pull it back just to get the right point. And you're trying to find a place where the overall sound quality isn't diminished, but you're taking off all those low frequencies that are just not necessary. And that sounds about right. And then I like to also roll off a little bit of the highs just to get rid of any noise in the high frequencies. If you make a bad habit of making those clicking noise on the right hand, which I'm guilty of, uh, just roll off a little bit of the high end. It can kind of help with that. And then I like to create a third plugin, same thing. Uh, this time I like to take some of the mid range and kind of subtract it a little bit, but this time have kind of a, a broad frequency range and just hit alter option and just kind of sweep across to see. Yeah, that sounds really good to me. Now, depending on how much is really, really personal taste, but that's just kind of what I like to do just to have a really even mix. Uh, later on, if I want to go back and kind of mess around with a little bit, if I want more bass or something like that, or more high ends, then I'll kind of mess with that a little bit. But remember, it's the subtle, subtle changes that make the biggest difference. I mean, if you look at this, I'm literally reducing the gain by one dB. It's not gonna make that big of a difference, but it's just enough just to get the sound that I like. Now, there are a number of ways that you can do this, but this is kind of my go-to system for EQing classical guitar. So if you record guitar on a regular basis, do you like to leave that raw recording or do you like to EQ the mix to get it to sound the way that you like? Let me know in the comment section down below. I would like to check it out. Well. That's it for me. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe. I'll leave all my links down in the description and see you next time. Peace.